Hey guys, in this video we're going to talk about weathering, erosion, and deposition Okay, in our unit 12. Now to begin with, let's take a quick look at what weathering really is and the effects of weathering. So here I have a picture of a rock okay, that's on the coast here. And this picture you can see goes back right here in 1890. Okay, so quite a long time ago. So what we're going to look at is the progression of the weathering that occurs on this rock. So here we have 1890 and then we have the exact same rock in 1910. So I'm going to go back and look at this one again and then go back to 1910. And you can see a whole lot in just a 20 year time frame the amount of weathering that's occurred. Okay, Water wearing the rock down, wind wearing the rock down. Okay, So just looking at this picture you can see that Right here, I've got quite a bit of area over here. This hole is fairly small. But when I go to the next picture, you can see that that area over here, much of it's already been eroded or weathered away. That hole has gotten significantly larger. So let's go ahead and jump up to the next picture. So 1910 to 1920, okay? There's that rock, same rock, okay? now. Some things that you'll see specifically is up here at the top of this rock, you're going to see that this top right here compared to 1920, and we have this top right here, okay, being eroded away. Okay, hole probably getting a little bit bigger right there. All right, now, so in 1920, now we're going to make a pretty significant jump. We're going to go to 1970. Where is the rock? And you'll also notice along the coastline, if I go, you know, there's some trees in there, obviously, that may have died or maybe not in the picture. But look at the coastline, how the coastline changes as well. So it's not just the rock, but you're looking at this coastline over here that changes through this weathering process. So 1910, here again, you see that coastline uh, changing quite dramatically as well over here, going to 1920, and then we're going to jump forward 50 years, and then look at this. Okay, obviously our rock is pretty much gone. Our coastline is actually looks like it's expanded. Okay, um, the, we've we've pushed back a lot of that vegetation and, and stuff back. And then we'll take one more look from 1970 to 1990, and that rock is just not there. Okay, it just no longer exists. So that's weathering. Okay, weathering is the gradual breakdown of rock and sediment due to several different factors we're going to talk about wind water um, acids plants all those things factoring into the breakdown of rock okay all right so weathering we say that weathering is the breaking apart of land and rocks into sediments um, weathering causes soil formation so we take down rocks and we take rocks and sediments and we break them down into their little individual pieces Okay, so right now you guys should be um, filling in these blanks. Okay, so weathering is the breaking down of rock into sediments. Okay, so rock breaking it down into little bitty pieces, that's sediment, okay, which ultimately creates soil. Okay, we talked a long time ago about uh, the uh, succession and primary succession where we take rock and we turn it into soil. That's again a weathering process that happens by wind and water and then also plants and other things. All right. So weathering is the, get this to go forward, weathering is the bringing apart of rocks into sediments, causes the soil formation. And there are two types of weathering. Okay, so the first type of weathering has we call mechanical weathering. And you've seen mechanical before because we've talked about mechanical digestion. It's the physical process of things being broke down. Okay, and digestion is the teeth breaking down the food. Okay, just taking an apple turning it into applesauce. It's still the same substance, but it's broken down to smaller pieces. That's mechanical. Same thing in weathering. We're taking that rock, we're not turning it into anything new, but we're taking that rock and we're breaking it into smaller pieces. That's mechanical weathering. Okay, so we're breaking apart rock. Okay, uh, hard rocks are obviously uh, weather slower than softer rocks. Okay, so a hard lot rock like a granite is going to weather a whole lot slower than a limestone. Okay, moisture, temperature fluctuations, freezing, those all affects uh, the breakdown of rock. And we'll talk about that here in just a second, how that affects the breakdown of mechanical weathering. 
Okay, so examples of mechanical weathering. The first is called abrasion, okay? Caused by the friction of the uh, wind, okay? Abrasion, wind blowing past rocks and, and, and blowing sand at rocks, and that sand, you know, beating rock into other rock, breaking it down. Uh, water splashing up against, that's all abrasion, okay? Wind, water, breaking down rocks. So abrasion, rubbing up against, okay? If you fall on the ground and you get a abrasion, you've rubbed up against something and it's caused a scratch, okay? Abrasion, rubbing. The next one is ice wedging. This is big. You see this all the time, even in sidewalks, okay? So what happens in ice wedging is water gets into a crack of a rock or a sidewalk and then the water freezes. And when water freezes, water expands, okay? When water turns into ice, it expands. That's why you never put a glass jar uh, you never put a glass jar of water into a freezer because that water will expand and it'll break the glass, okay? Um, and that's what it does to rocks. You put water into rocks, the water freezes, it expands, it ultimately breaks the rock. So that's ice wedging, okay? Ice and then wedging. And then we have the next one, which is, okay, animals. Animals burrowing through soil and sediment and rock, making their homes. So animals playing a role by digging through. And, and you say animals digging through rocks, softer rocks. Animals can burrow homes into softer rocks. Plant roots, okay, this is huge, okay. Plants have a, and we looked at this in succession, plants have the ability to get in the cracks of rocks and they grow and they break rocks apart. Uh, that slow growing process of roots are extra extraordinarily powerful. You see this in concrete sidewalks all the time. Plant roots lifting concrete sidewalks, getting between sidewalks, causing cracks. This is how succession, primary succession happens. Plant rock, plant breaking down rock. Okay. Now, that was mechanical weathering. Let's talk about chemical weathering. Now we know when we've talked about chemical digestion, taking rock and you, there's a reaction and it kind of turns it into something new. Okay, same thing here. Chemical changes, chemical weathering, chemical reactions. So in this process, you have where we have, um, you have a chemical, okay, breaking down. There is a reaction, okay? So we have chemicals that break down the bonds in that rock and cause that rock to come apart. Chemicals, they cause the rock to disintegrate, to fall apart. Okay, uh, moisture and high temperatures can also play factors in this. Okay, but uh, breaking down rock by chemical reactions. You're turning some of those rock pieces into something new, just like you do in chemical digestion. You're breaking down the bonds, which causes these rocks to fall apart. So let's look at, at, at some time, excuse me, let's look at some examples of chemical weathering. Okay, so oxidation or rusting, we know what rusting is, or we know what rust looks like at least, okay. An oxidation is where uh, the, the, the moisture in the air, okay, and air reacts with metal and causes it to rust. Rust is actually a process of metal breaking down. That's an example of weathering. There's a lot of metals that are in rocks. A lot of irons and other things are in rocks. So if you have that metal in rock and water gets to it, air gets to it, it causes that rock, to, the metal in that rock to rust and to disintegrate and fall apart. So oxidation and rusting, okay? Uh, chemical weathering can be done by um, uh, plant and, and natural acids, okay? So cave formations, you've got different type of acids moving through the ground and they start to erode that limestone and break down that limestone in caves, okay? Um, so that's chemical weathering. Plant, again, natural, natural acids, so these are just things we find naturally in nature, but they do cause the chemical bonds and rocks to come apart and, and dissolve and disintegrate rocks, and that's why we get most of our, our cave formations, is uh, chemicals breaking down those rocks underneath ground. Okay, um, acid rain. Okay, we have pollution. We have factories putting pollution into the air, cars putting pollution into the air, and that air mixes with the water, and when it comes back down, it causes the chemical breakdown of rock. It breaks down those chemical bonds. Here we have a, an example of a rock that looks very pitted, okay, because um, that acid rain is pooled and has gradually dissolved and disintegrated and broken down that rock. 
Okay, so acid rain being a big contributor to chemical weathering. All right, so that was weathering in general. We had mechanical weathering and chemical weathering. Now we're going to talk about erosion. Okay, erosion is part of weathering. Okay, erosion. So erosion is when sediments, okay, wind, water, and glaciers, gravity, humans, okay, uh, move, are, are moved. Okay, they are moved. Erosion is the movement of sediment. Okay, so sediment. So we've taken rock and we we broken it down, and then and then erosion is it's moved away. It's gone on to someplace else. Okay. Get off of here. So uh, some examples of how er erosion happens: wind carries sediment, water carries sediment, glaciers, gravity, humans move soil. We take big dump trucks and move them from one place to another. And then deposition is where you move the sediment and then you drop it off. Okay, um, so we drop off the sediment into a new location. Uh, sand dunes, for example. Um, sand dunes, for example, are you know where wind takes sand and blows it to a new location. Okay, that's deposition. Okay, so we have erosion and then we have that de deposition where it's dropped off. Um, here is, it's kind of hard to see here, but this is the Mississippi Delta. Here's the Mississippi River winding through here. And down here is actually the Delta. Okay, and it's where the Mississippi is actually extended into the uh, Gulf of Mexico because over time the sediment has been de deposited by the river. Okay, the river, the waters carried that sediment down the Mississippi River and deposited, deposited that sediment at the end. And you get what's called a delta, where that the deposition happens right there as the water dumps into the ocean, dumps off the sediment, and you get a gradual buildup of this sediment. And then obviously we have beaches. Okay. So we're going to talk a little bit about eco eco regions. Okay, eco ecology regions of the of the Earth of the United States of Texas that affect. Um, Wed, okay, weathering, erosion, and deposition, and those things would include. Those would include uh, vegetation, okay. So vegetation a may increase erosion. Altitude, how high you are, okay. Uh, wind, water, and runoff. The higher you are in the mountains, the faster the wind is going to go. The faster that water is going to rush downhill, okay. Runoff that's going to pick up more sediment, okay. The faster water moves the bigger the sediment it can carry, the more sediment it can carry. Fast moving water can do e enormous things. Okay, uh, Coastal areas, we have a lot of, of erosion by waves and water, obviously erosion of beaches in coastal areas. Desert, wind being a big erosion factor in deserts, creating lots of sand dunes. Uh, rivers, right here, again we talked about uh, rivers taking water, and again water moving, water is a big contributor to erosion and deposition taking sediment and moving it from one place to another and that's where we're talking about the delta and then climate, rainfall and wind speeds if it's dry, then there's not a whole lot of rain then uh, it's going to cause and allow wind to pick up that dry soil and blow it to other locations okay, so this is weathering, erosion and deposition if you need to go back, please do so, and we'll catch up to you next time.